I don't think I have ever had as much trouble with a bullet journal setup as I had with this one. Previously I've had instances where things weren't really coming together but I could usually cover it up and then tweak something, change it a little bit, but this setup genuinely had me considering sticking the pages together and just flipping to the next one. I didn't end up doing it, I did end up just covering up the stuff that I had put down with that red paper at the top, and I'll show you in a bit the process to get to that point, but for this setup we're going with a theme that is fully inspired by these washi tape stickers from the washi tape shop. When they arrived I knew I wanted to do a theme with them at some point, though technically speaking that was not going to be the theme for this setup in particular. What I was going to go with was a maps theme, and I got through, sketched everything out, started penning stuff in, but once I'd actually finished off the header for this page I wasn't really gelling with it. So I took some time, sat there, considered how I might adjust it or tweak it to make it more fit what I wanted for the layout, but it seemed that every single thing that I I tried within the realm of the theme that I was going for just wasn't working. I really didn't want to stick the pages together so I was trying to go for a fix where I could just cover over the stuff that I'd already put in, but despite having a few iterations of trying that, I just couldn't get it to come together the way I wanted to. I wanted to include this footage though because I feel like it's valuable to show that not everything we try in our journals is going to be 100% right the first time around, and sometimes there are going to be ideas or layouts that we just end up abandoning, and that's okay. It's all part of the process. I think possibly part Part of the issue that I had with the setup going with that maps theme is that I didn't quite know in my head what I wanted it to look like in its finished form. Probably if I had a better idea of that before going and putting pen to the paper I might have had a better chance of getting it to come out in a way that was a little bit more satisfying, but it'll be a theme that I revisit at some point. After the first fix didn't really work I thought that maybe I could turn it into a more scrapbooky type theme, so I got out a bunch of different papers in kind of blue and tan kind of tones and tried to layer those together to kind of cover over the mistake that I had, but then once I put a few elements of those down, the colour palette wasn't really coming out the way that I wanted it to, the brown of one tape didn't really match the brown of the other. This entire process of me umming and ahhing over this took over an hour, so by this point it's kind of late in the piece, I'm not really feeling it, starting to get a little bit down on myself, so I thought it would just be easier to change the theme. Thankfully the washi tape stickers offer a very easy colour palette of black, white and red, so I figured I'd just cover up that header with a piece of red paper and then stick my header label over the top. Rather than doing the header lettering myself in this setup, I just made some text boxes on Microsoft Word and then printed them off and stuck them into the layout. But as seen, we already finished the actions list. That one's going to be where I hold all of the different steps that I'm taking to work on my goals. And now we can work on the cover page. Just like we had for our January setup, rather than doing monthly setups I'm actually going with cyclic ones, so blocks of time that are four weeks long, meaning that this setup is actually from January 29th through to February 25th, because it does take up the majority of February and most of the days within the cycle are from February. I figured I'd just call this my February plan with me. But for the cover page I wanted to do something that was kind of pretty, still kind of simple, and the nice part is that those washi tape stick make it very easy, but we just have the cycle 2 header and then a ring of fish. One of the major benefits of using the washi tape stickers rather than doing any kind of doodling myself is that the setup was a lot faster, at least after the initial hour and a half that I spent filming all of that other stuff. And if you wanted to grab the tape set for yourself it is linked in the description box. You can also use code JASHY10 for 10% off at the washi tape shop, because we love savings. The fish ring itself on the page though looks a little bit plain, so I wanted to bring in some more of that punchy red paper to add a little bit of contrast. This was an element that I used throughout the setup as a kind of larger blanketing decorative element. It's kind of nice how different coloured paper can do that for a layout. You don't have to do a whole bunch of drawing or doodling to get something looking nice. But rather than sticking that paper over the top of what we already have on the page, I wanted it to look like it was poking out from beneath it. This meant cutting a Dutch door, so slicing up kind of at the middle of the page and then cutting away from the right hand side of that ring. To do this I just used a combination of scissors and an X-Acto knife, making sure to be very careful and also putting a cutting mat underneath the page so that I didn't cut the page beneath it. 
When it comes to doing this style of decoration, there are a couple of different options. The main ones being either you can stick the paper to the page underneath the one you're working on, so that Dutch door is left with an irregular edge that goes around the outside of the decorative element, or what I decided to do instead is stick the paper to the back of the page that I'm actually working on. That way when you flip the page, it's still like you're flipping a full page in the notebook. It's just made with paper that came from outside the notebook. It's kind of tricky to explain, but hopefully with the visuals you kind of get what I mean. I effectively wanted the illusion of a Dutch door that was laying on top of some coloured paper, but I still wanted to utilise the full page underneath it. Also, in utilising the full page underneath it, I didn't want anything from that page kind of showing through to the cover page. Doing it the way that I've done it is a lot more fiddly than just sticking it to the page that's still on the right hand side but the next spread over, but it does mean that I get to utilise more of the next spread as a whole because I won't have any of that page actually showing through to the cover page. The most important part of this though was making sure that the right hand edge of the red paper actually lined up with where my notebook finishes. I didn't want it too far in or too far out. Effectively I wanted it to look as if it was actually the page in the notebook. To do that I just lined it up with the right hand side of the next spread and then brought the Dutch door down on top of this to secure the two together. You'll have seen that I also ended up adding in some black paper, not just the red, because I thought that the red by itself was a little bit too overpowering and I'm a sucker for contrast. I love the contrast between the black, the red and the white together and I figured if I continue to use them together on each of the pages it'll tie things together a little bit nicer. Once the page was all trimmed up though then I just had to round off the corners and before we get into the next page in the setup, we're just gonna have a flip back and see how this cycle went. It feels really weird to say this cycle rather than this month, but for the first cycle or for the first four weeks of the year, we went with a simple botanicals theme. So very easy to draw leaf designs and craft paper. I really enjoyed this theme, I thought it was a really nice pretty way to start the year and one that wasn't too much work, especially because with setting up all of the new journals in December, I always find myself getting into a little bit of a creative burnout kind of space where I'm not feeling super inspired to do things because I've like used all of my creative energy up on those new journal setups. So having a really simple theme was quite nice. Funnily enough it seems like I'm doing the same thing for cycle 2 though, because honestly life is pretty busy right now and that's possibly part of the reason why the initial theme wasn't really gelling with me, it was going to end up being a lot more effort whereas the one I ended up going with is a lot more simple. You can see I've got a couple more boxes to finish up the last few days of the month and then right after this we're into cycle 2. Actions list and cover page done and then we're flipping on over and here I'm going to be setting up a calendar layout. Now I had a calendar layout in cycle 1 and in particular I was using that to track what I was actually doing with each of my time blocks each day. But one of the things that I was kind of missing from my setup was having a full overview of everything that was going on during the four week period. I did have boxes on my fortnightly setups or bi-weekly setups which could house things like events and YouTube posts and everything else that was going on, but I thought it would be nice to have a full overview of the cycle as a whole rather than just the two separate two week blocks. It's this weird thing because I know that monthly logs in general haven't really worked for me previously, so maybe in setting this up I'm still going to have the same problem of not really using it, but right now the intention very much is just having a full clear picture of everything that's going on, so not necessarily just events but also posts, tasks, that kind of thing, kind of as a way to help me theme my days. I'm still going to have the fortnightly set up because that's where I'm going to do the majority of my tracking. So for instance, habit tracking, meal tracking, that kind of thing. But my intention is to pull events and posting data out of those layouts and put them onto here instead. Initially I was going to have three calendar boxes on the left hand side and four on the right, but then with having stuck in the paper to that Dutch door, I thought that the box kind of came a little bit too close to the black paper. So instead I shifted the whole calendar over and used that gap on the left hand side as a space to put decoration. The decoration was made very simple with the use of those washi stickers. And then to put in the initial for each of the days of the week, I just used my Zig Clean Color dot marker to put in a dot of red color and then wrote over the top of those with a regular black pen. I really like how the red dot marker matches the red circles that are in some of the stickers, in particular the one that I've put at the bottom left. So it's nice to have that repeated element on the calendar as well. In terms of the space taken up by the red panel on the left hand side, I don't have any specific uses planned for this one, but if you were setting this layout up for yourself, you could use it for something like a monthly task list 
or daily gratitude or some kind of monthly tracker or log. As said, I don't have any immediate plans to use it, but I could probably store some kind of notes in there. To put the numbers in each of the calendar boxes, I used the top right corner. And while my cycle goes across two months, I've just put in the number for those months respectively. So January 29th, 30th and 31st are numbered 29, 30 and 31. And then right after that, it goes into February and I've numbered that box number one as well, rather than numbering them with like the cycle day number. So one through 28. Once that one was done though, it was time to flip over to our next layout in the setup. And while in my previous cyclic setup, I didn't have very many cyclic pages. I effectively just had the actions list and then that calendar. One of the things that I reflected on was that I realistically wanted to have a space to hold all of my work tasks. So all of the things that I'm doing for work. For me in particular, this is putting out content, making videos, doing my team membership perks. So I wanted to have little spaces dedicated to each of those things. To keep the style of this page similar to the ones we've already set up, I put in a red header at the top of the left hand page and then went in over the top with one of those print off headers. I love print off headers, they are so easy, especially if you're using a lettering style that you don't really want to have to try and take the time and effort to recreate yourself. Or if it's a lettering style that realistically you kind of can't do yourself. Can't isn't really what I mean there, but it's more so it would just take way too much effort to try and recreate it. In terms of the structure of the page though, effectively it just has separate little segments for each of the different types of work that I'm doing. The first one that I set up was for my video content. So this is things that I'm putting out on YouTube, either for the channel in general or as membership perks or as part of our of blog posts. And this one is getting set up in an Alistair style method. So having a little column for each of the different stages of having produced that video. I use little icons to represent those different stages and those columns in particular are going on the right hand side of the section. Another section that I wanted was for Instagram posting. This is something that I'm not very good at keeping up with, so I thought maybe having a section for it on this layout would hold me accountable to actually posting over there. This one is done in a fairly similar way, so that initial dot to check off when the thing has been completed, followed by a blank space where I can write in a title or a kind of description of what the post is, and then each of those columns along the right hand side of the section to check off each of the different stages of having made the post. That one goes all the way to the bottom of the page. So in the bottom left corner, I decided to put the stages of doing an Art and Olive blog post. So organizing the text, the printable, the photos, the reel, and then the majority of the right hand page is getting dedicated to course preparations. On the right hand page, I'm also going to have checkboxes for each of my membership perks separately, but I need to plan how much space I need for the course preparations first before I put that in. For now, I'm just going to put the dots for each of the different parts that I'm going to need to prepare. As a finishing touch to the layout, I just added in another one of those washi stickers. But all in all, I'm quite pleased with how this setup turned out, and I'm really glad that with the use of the washi stickers being as easy as it is, the decoration for my fortnightly and daily pages is going to be super simple. I'm looking forward to continuing with my cyclic and fortnightly planning experiment. And while we didn't set up a fortnightly layout in this video, we do have a separate video where I show you the process for figuring out how to set that up and what to include. That one's kind of a behind the scenes look at my planning process. So click or tap on that one and I'll see you over there.